This is the BBC. Hello, and welcome to Comedy of the Week with me, Sindhu V. This is my first time hosting this fabulous podcast, so I thought I'd start with a little bit about myself. I'm a comedian, and V isn't really my surname. Nope. My real surname is Venkat Narayanan. V-E-N-K-A-T-A-N-A-R-A-Y-A-N-A-N. That's right. 16 letters, 6 A's, and I was 9 the first time I spelt it correctly. Now, if that's a bit daunting, you could just stick to my first name, Sindhu. Two simple syllables. Yet, after I left India, people have called me Cindy. They have called me Sandy. And in this country, someone once enlightened me with, Ah, Shandy. <laughs> it's also the name of a beverage. Not also, because it's not my name. But anyway, if you're determined to get it right, here's a little tip. Sindhu rhymes with Hindu which I am. Hey, how convenient, right? Anyway, this week's comedy pick is the case book of Max and Ivan. This is a sketch about two detectives who are super keen to solve crime, but are really not very good at it. It's a bit like me when I want to make quiche on a weekend. Super keen, sort of rubbish. Except when their story goes wrong, it has japes. I love that word, japes. When my quiche story goes wrong, it has tears. Here's what I love about this week's pick. It's like going to watch a really funny play in the theater, but like in your pajamas. So like when you laugh out loud, which I guarantee you will, you can snort, you can pause and run to the loo without being the weirdo who stands up to go do that in the middle of an actual theater, all like, "Uh excuse me, I'm so sorry, oops, Uh beg your pardon, (laughs) and everyone's giving you the (laughs) full-on stuff, You get my drift. Oh, and the other thing is you can open as many bags of stuff as you want, as noisily as you want, and no one is going to turn around and look at you, and then you have to quickly hide the bag and point to your neighbor like it's their fault and shrug like, "Uh what a weirdo. So here it is, this week's comedy pick, The Casebook of Max and Ivan. Due to a scheduling error, you are listening to the ongoing adventures of London's most competitively priced private detectives. Featuring fast-talking wheeler dealer Max. If I had a pound for every time I needed a pound, I wouldn't be stood here asking you for a pound. (laughs) And fast-breathing wagon wheeler Ivan. I'm young, dumb and full of misconceptions about birds. Which I call the rabbits of the sky. It's the casebook of Max and Ivan! Dear Diary, another dismal week. Business is slow, although not as slow as Ivan, who tried to cook a microwave meal by giving it a small wave. (laughs) He's a tedious, frustrating man. Max, sorry, do I have to transcribe your diary for you? That's how we've always done it. I know, but it's 11am, which means second nap times are calling. (sighs) I thought there'd be more to life than a failing detective agency, an incompetent employee, and a landlord who gets more eccentric by the... Boys, boys, boys! Malcolm? What's 12 feet long, has a tail, and loves the taste of raw chicken? I don't know, what? No idea, I was asking you. <laughs> anyway, whatever it is, it's in the cellar, and it's getting bigger. Right. Oh, and I've sent a possible client your way. A guy who used to work where I drink. You know, the cemetery. <laughs> He said he had a case, and when I found out he didn't mean a case of extra strength cooking sherry, I put down my drinking funnel and gave him your details. Anyway, have a good day. Bye! Sure enough, later that morning, Malcolm's potential client calls at the office. Jerry Glossop enters, a strong, dark coffee in his weak, pale hands. Sorry, I'm dead tired at the mall for some reason. Must be because I'm stressing about this theft. OK, and take me through that from the start. Well, Max, as best I understand it, theft is where a bad person and someone else's stuff are very much in love. Uh, Jerry, you, you were saying... Right, yeah. so I'm the caretaker at Nunhead Community Centre. Worked there one year, man and slightly younger man. <laughs> Well, Malcolm said you worked at the cemetery. Oh, yeah, I did. Not to brag, but I've been sacked from loads of jobs. (laughs) 
I love it at the community centre, though. But there's a problem. Equipment has started going missing every night. Have you checked the CCTV? I have, and as I suspected, we do not have any. <laughs> Our budgets are so low, we couldn't even afford the cheapest of CCTV systems, which is why I've come to you. I've no idea what you're insinuating, but if I'm... Put down your glass of rainwater and get up off that stack of free newspapers. <laughs> We've got a case on our hands. With not a second to spare, the boys wait 18 minutes for the replacement bus service that takes them <laughs> to within a 25-minute walk of Nunhead Community Centre. This is the first job I've ever liked, but if I can't find out what's happened to all this stuff before tomorrow's open day... I'll get sacked. And do you have any suspicions as to who might be behind it? Let's just say I do. <laughs> and that I suspect it's the woman who runs the acting classes, whose name is Lavinia Moncrief, and who keeps putting on extra classes when other clubs get cancelled due to their equipment being stolen. <laughs> if you know what I mean. Oh, well, yes, I mean, that was all very explicit. Great. <laughs> Thus... The boys enter the strip-lit community hall, where formidable B-movie actress Lavinia Virginia Abyssinia Battersby Moncrief <laughs> is halfway through her Monday morning class, acting for mortals. OK, everybody, really inhabit that space. Now, let the space inhabit you. Open your third eye, close your first eye, and sort of squint through your second eye. <laughs> Richard, show me downward-facing dog. Sarah, give me upward-facing buffalo. <laughs> Lucy and I want to see downtrodden but optimistic anteater who lost his life savings in a pyramid scheme. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. Right, time for a quick water break. All of you pretend to be water for five minutes. <laughs> Uh, Ms. Moncrief. Oh, newcomers. Pilgrims on a quest to learn the secrets of la stage, la film, and if you're lucky, l'advertissement recurring. Well, you've come to the right place, darling. You see, I create stars. Have you heard of Daniel Day-Lewis, Meryl Streep, Dean Gaffney? Great. Then you know the sort of thing I teach. Acting. Uh, Lavinia? You there. You've got something. I do? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I can always sense it. You've got... You've got 40 pounds, haven't you? <laughs> Maybe. I knew it. Here, try this speech from Macbeth, as delivered by a dolphin. Oh, um, OK. <laughs> and Finn. <laughs> Stop. Waggle your fin. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Please, Miss, Miss Moncrief, we're not here to take your class. Oh, but of course, your casting directors. <laughs> I am Le Foul. Why wouldn't you want to cast the star of such classic upper, lower, mid budget films as Apocalypse Soon? <laughs> no, still nothing. <laughs> Not to mention tense, high-tech thriller, Rear Windows 95. <laughs> if that robot couldn't love, then why am I pregnant? <laughs> My playing age is 17 to 23, and I've got a fabulous fur coat. Although, if you're doing close-ups, I'm prepared to shave. <laughs> Just then, the hall doors creak open and a group of besuited business people enter, led by a woman brandishing a clipboard bearing the sticker, you don't have to be mad to work here, but it helps. <laughs> right, as yourselves can see, we've obviously got lots of great facilities here, <laughs> which are obviously a little underused at present. Oh, guys, it's me boss, Janet. Works at the council building across the road. She's been... Dead nice about the fact that she'll have to sack me if I can't find the stolen stuff. Hi, <laughs> right, Jerry, just showing some council people around here, do you? Is yourself any closer to finding the equipment? Oh, uh, yeah, 100%. We're like closing in. Right. I'll obviously see yourselves tomorrow morning at the open time. <laughs> Lavinia, your name has been mentioned... Fabulous! No. <laughs> ..in conjunction with the multiple thefts that threaten to close this community centre. What? 
No, why? I love this building. I was drawn to it by some unknown energy. The last thing I'd want is to see it close. But Jerry mentioned you've been adding classes as others have had to stop running. I mean, looking at this timetable, other than the AA meeting, everything's one of your drama classes. Oh, no, AA stands for advanced acting. <laughs> and it helps if you're very drunk. <laughs> As for my classes, I'm imparting rare theatrical gifts, like subtext. Oh, I'm so happy. <laughs> you see? And vocal mime. <clears throat> oh, look, I'm in a glass box. <laughs> and the dramatic pause. Lavinia. Destiny! <laughs> So, if you don't care to learn from the co-star of Titanic 2, The Bitch is Back, <laughs> then you can just get out. Thusly dismissed, the boys work their way around the remaining clubs and societies at Nunhead Community Centre. A sorry bunch indeed, since the theft of their equipment. They include the Bell Ringing Club. Without our bells, we're just a group of late middle-aged people having affairs. <laughs> The hypnotherapist. Without my dangly watch, I'm just a late middle-aged man watching the bell ringing club through a conveniently placed keyhole. <laughs> and the historical reenactment society. Without our homemade suits of armour and DIY weapons, we're just a group of perfectly happy, well-adjusted young people. <laughs> Detectiving complete, the boys head down a narrow corridor to report back to Jerry. He said his office was third on the left. Whoa. Behind that tiny door. Hello, lads. Please don't tell me you work here. Oh, no. Thank God. I live here. Oh, yikes. <laughs> it's a compact bijou demiplex. Looks like a cupboard. I wish, mate. There are legal requirements for a cupboard. <laughs> I make the most of the space. Janet had a clap-activated light installed, and the lack of switch saves me some precious millimetres. Yeah, I suppose it's not completely depressing. Oh, some crisps. Stop eating my pillow. <laughs> Jerry, in terms of finding the equipment, we suspect it's Lavinia. With all these extra classes, she must be making a fortune. I recognise a lucrative business when I see one. Working for Max, I make a pretty penny. Or, as the bank calls it, a penny. <laughs> we just need to prove she's been stealing, but she's banned us from her classes. Look, I'm not going to tell you how to do your job. No. <laughs> I'm just a useless caretaker. No way. Useless? <laughs> You're use more. Uh, useful is the word. In <laughs> Look, you know, this place is sparkling. Oh, thanks. When I first started, the job used to take me ages, but these days the building, unlike me, cleans itself. <laughs> Anyway, unless you can find all the group's equipment, I'll lose me job and Janet's gonna lose her marbles. She's married to the hypnotherapist and his livelihood's gone missing. We've got until 10 a.m. tomorrow. Now, if you'll excuse me, I just need to use that drain. Back in their Peckham office, the boys mull over some wine and drink it whilst discussing the case. Max, I can't make head nor tail of this. Evan, stop trying to flip your penny. Now, focus. <laughs> I'm sure we haven't got to the bottom of Lavinia Moncrief. Oh, I've long dreamed of getting to the bottom of Lavinia Moncrief. <laughs> Malcolm, what are you doing cowering under the table? Oh, you know, catching a few minutes away from my fun new pal. <laughs> All right, I'm coming. Anyway, Lavinia Moncrief used to be my favourite actress back in the day. She was the queen of the unofficial sequel. You must remember The Seventh Sense. I smell dead people. And I was one of the few who managed to get a copy of the unreleased Seven Brides for Twelve Monkeys. Ah, too many monkeys! You know what happened to her after that, of course? Go on. She tried to self-produce. I, I tried to do that on a bus and got cautioned by the police. <laughs> She spent years financing her own fantasy epic, The Lizard of Oslo. It was supposed to be her masterpiece, but she ran out of cash before the final scene could be filmed. Well, this B-movie actress is going to be seeing some jail time if we can deduce where she's put the E-equipment. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, I should probably go and feed it another trough of chicken carcasses. Incidentally, Malcolm, how did you acquire that thing? Well, all I know is that I either lost or won a bet. 
Oh, by the way, they say never look a gift horse in the mouth. Turns out you should never look a gift giant Komodo dragon in the mouth either, or it will try and breed with you. <laughs> OK, Waffles, num num time. Right, Ivan, we need to get back to that community centre and hunt for that missing equipment without being detected. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? That actually, Bird's Eye is really quite an unpleasant name for a food company. <laughs> not, not even close. It's time to go... Undercover! The boys return to Nunhead Community Centre, determined to infiltrate Lavinia's method acting class entitled Crying With Your Mind, dressed as regular people. <laughs> Max disguises himself as IT consultant Brendan Gromford. Uh, Brendan's the name. Uh, ensuring uh, networks of desktop computers share the same IP address is the game. <laughs> Whilst Ivan transforms into street chugger Benji to road. Aya, could you pop your headphones off for a quick two-hour chat about giving us your bank details so we can work together to save the mosquito? <laughs> Newcomers, welcome, darlings. Let's get you started on eyebrow acting. Remember, it's Roger Moore, not Roger Less. <laughs> Sometime later, the boys regroup with Jerry in his cupboard room to discuss their findings. Ivan is the first to debrief. Ivan, put your briefs back on. <laughs> Lads, how was Lavinia's class? <sighs> Much like watching Ivan try to tie his shoes, it was frustrating. Turns out I'm wearing clogs. <laughs> At one point, I thought I'd got her to confess. For this exercise, we shall confide our darkest secrets to one another. Brendan? Uh, uh, yep. Well, uh, I once uh, did not safely eject a USB stick, uh, yeah. despite knowing that it could uh, corrupt the files. Fascinating. W what about you, Lavinia? My darkest secret? For an extended period of time, I have been stealing... Oh? ...hearts. <laughs> Every time I appear on screen or on stage, or, more recently, webcam. <laughs> And when I started talking to her, she just broke into an hour-long one-woman show, charting her many adventures. I slept with Stanley Kubrick 12 times <laughs> before I realised it was a different Stanley Kubrick. <laughs> I'm sorry, what was your question, Benji? I, I just said hello. <laughs> but as for stealing the other class's stuff, I think she's too wrapped up in showbiz to even think about it. My darlings, there's nowhere I'd rather be than teaching you in this beautiful hall. Other than, of course, on the set of my unfinished magnum opus, The Lizard of Oslo, and finally getting to deliver the iconic end line. But, Your Majesty, this lizard is not going to kill itself. And there's another thing that suggests it might not be her. We were the only two people in her class. I sneak to look at her registers. She's throwing extra classes, but barely anyone's going to them. It's pure vanity. Oh, yeah. She lacks foresight, business acumen and long-term planning abilities. I mean, Jerry, you're stood in a cupboard eating a banana peel. I know. It's my birthday. <laughs> What's left to do, Max? Well, Ivan, much like a badly stocked hot chocolate vending machine, we're running out of options. <laughs> There's only one thing for it. We'll stake out the community centre overnight and catch the thief in the act before tomorrow's open day. Hey, I'll help you if you like. You're happy to spend a night sat awake on a hard plastic chair? A whole chair to myself. <laughs> happy birthday to me! <laughs> I'm well up for it. Just gotta... Oh, just gotta grab another coffee. The trio prepare to lie in wait for the mysterious thief to strike. Ivan, how are you getting on setting up the camera? Hi, my name's Ivan Gonzalez. I'm currently unrepresented and I'm self-taping for the role of Billy Elliot. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, no, Dad. Ah, I must dance. Ah, simply must. <laughs> Stop that high kicking and please put your briefs back on. Now, we've got a thief to catch. Everybody stay alert. Twelve hours later. Well, Ivan, you've been asleep for exactly twelve hours. <laughs> oh, half my usual sleep. <laughs> I'm gutted, lads. I don't know why the thief didn't strike this time. I'm, I'm sorry. Suddenly, the door bursts open and all the clubs and societies pour into the hall. You there, detectives. Have you found our ringing bells? And our reenacting armour. And my dangly hypnosis watch. I'm afraid our search has been as fruitless as Ivan's recipe for fruit salad. It's simply beef mints and whipped cream. <laughs> With the sun risen and Jerry's hopes sunk, the eager public streams into the hall, which is bare save for Lavinia, who stands on stage dressed in an understated and functional mink kimono. 
Ah, la publique. I'll be very happy to sign photos if anyone's brought along any photos of anything. <laughs> the public, lured in on the promise of a cornucopia of possibilities, instead find but one. You are welcome to witness the majesty of my teaching process. Vocal warm-ups. On the jetty, the sweaty Serengeti Yeti eats spaghetti until he's diabetti. <laughs> At this point, a figure pushes through the crowd, brandishing a clipboard emblazoned with a sticker that says, I heart spreadsheets. Hello, Jerry. All right, Janet. I must admit, I'm obviously slightly disappointed in yourself. Yeah, you don't need to say it. I've been sacked enough times in my life to know when I'm being sacked. Wait, I am, I am being sacked. Yeah, and... yourself is very much sacked. Right. <laughs> Sorry, everyone. It looks as though this open day is closed. And obviously this building is seemingly unsustainable in its current form. Wait! I can see this community centre via the power of acting alone. Benji? That's you, Ivan. Oh, yeah. Hiya. Perform what we rehearsed yesterday. Hamlet's monologue as delivered by a clapping seal. Oh, great. Arf, arf. Just then, something strange happens to Jerry. His eyes grow wide and glassy, and he begins walking with an eerie smoothness. Must. Clean. Jerry? Must. Clean. Jerry, can you hear me? Ivan, look! Off, off! Yeah, Max? Sorry, I was on a bit of a roll there. Something bizarre has happened to Jerry. Don't know what you're talking about, mate. I'm fine. What? No, but a second ago you were... Yeah, I hope you're happy, mate. I've lost my place in the speech. Where was I? Oh, oh yeah. Arf! Must. Clean. There, look. Jerry's affected by the clap. Me too. That's why I prefer not to wear briefs. <laughs> and watch, Ivan, I think we might have found our thief. Guided by some unknown force, Jerry lurches forward. He grabs Yorick's skull, which Ivan has been balancing on his nose, and marches out of the hall. Most clean! As Max and Ivan follow the staggering Jerry, Lavinia comes to the staggering realisation that she's not currently the centre of attention. Everybody, I'd like you all to see one of my greatest parts. <laughs> yes, nice, isn't it? <laughs> With all eyes firmly back on Lavinia, the boys catch up with Jerry in the hallway. Jerry! Oh, hey lads, what's up? The thief, it's you! I don't know what you... Wait, what's this skull? <laughs> you sound just like the policeman who dug up my uncle's garden. <laughs> it's the clapping, Jerry. When you hear it, it's almost as though you're hypnotised. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, I would be, yeah. That makes sense. I told you I'm no good at work, so after a few weeks here, I got the hypnotherapist to make me love cleaning stuff. But how have you been entering a trance without realising it? No idea. I just do my shift, have my dinner, a couple of sachets of ketchup and a plastic thimble of UHT milk, because it says it gives you a long life. <laughs> and <laughs> then I return to my cupboard bedroom and turn off my clap-activated light. You've been hypnotising yourself! Oh! Destiny! <laughs> that explains why I'm always so knackered and the place is always so clean. I've been up all night moving stuff about, but, but that means... Well, if you enter the trance again... I'll lead us to the equipment. Let's do this. Must. Clean. With his eyes rolled back and saliva trickling from his mouth, it becomes clear Ivan has fallen asleep. <laughs> Wake up and look. Oh, Jerry's leaving the building. The boys charge out of the community centre and across the street, where Jerry is striding towards the council building. Must clean. With well-oiled precision, Jerry taps in a key code, enters the building, proceeds to the end of the hallway, opens a door, and calmly deposits the skull in the office of... Janet, Janet the, the irritating, irritating councilwoman. <laughs> Jerry, wake up! No way. You've worked out what I've been up to at night. You sound like my uncle talking to the policeman shortly after they dug up his garden. Sure enough, everything that's gone missing from the community centre is there in one vast pile, along with a mug emblazoned with the phrase, Danger, this council may contain nutters. Jerry, it's time to salvage this open day. Jerry and the boys return to the community centre as heroes, bearing all of the stolen goods. 
Ivan triumphantly hurls down the bells. That's the rhythm I've been trying to get us to play. <laughs> and returns the armour of the historical reenactment society. Do you know what? Maybe we should actually go out in the real world. Here's and... your stuff, guys. Huzzah! Verily, our quest continueth. <laughs> Finally, Jerry looks accusingly at the hypnotherapist. Ah, Jerry, you, um, found my watch. Oh, well, well done yourselves. Just one second. We've got a bone to pick with you, Janet, and you, hypnotherapist, whatever your name is. Andromedo. Right. What? <laughs> really? Yes. Okay, fine. <laughs> you hypnotised Jerry into taking this community centre's equipment to Janet's office. And, Janet, you installed the cla activated light bulb in Jerry's genuinely upsetting living area to ensure that he'd have no choice but to steal for you. Lies! Slander! But why would you, whose job it is to keep this place open, want it to close? Suddenly, the group of besuited men Janet was previously showing around the day before, reappear, waving contracts. Janet, it's us, the property developers from Amalgamated Gentrification Corp. Are you ready to sell this building at a knockdown price for us and massive personal profit for you and your husband, as discussed? Well, I, I do wish his sales was slightly more discreet. My self is very much sacked now. <laughs> That's right. You failed to close these clubs, and now it looks like you two are going to be members of a new club called Prison. <laughs> Thanks to our detectiving. I think not. Lavinia? You both lied in order to infiltrate my class. Oh, we're so sorry. No, never apologize for acting. <laughs> That's what you were doing. And what led you to discovering Jerry's hypnosis? Acting. Acting saved the day, and it's what I teach. So if any newcomers want to join my classes, there's plenty of space. Hooray! And with that, hordes of members of the public sign up for not only Lavinia's classes, but the Bell Ringing Society, the Historical Reenactment Club, and the 17 or so other clubs that there wasn't time or narrative need to mention. <laughs> Gardening club is growing. Yeah, the real ale society is filling up. <laughs> did you don't mind if I did you do join this amateur pornographer society? <laughs> Jerry is elated. What? You've done it. Was there ever any doubt? Yeah, loads. <laughs> In fact, I thought you would definitely fail. Okay, yeah, right. Well done, us. Must click, please stop it. Must click, not really stop it. Must click, please stop it. Must click, it hurts everything. Must click, really don't please. And so the police arrest Janet and Andromedo, whilst the property developers skulk off with their contracts between their legs. <laughs> Would have been nice to redevelop this beautiful old Norwegian building. Wait a second. What did they say? Norwegian? Oh, yeah. Didn't you know? Nunhead is twinned with the town of Harstad. They sent us this mid-century Norwegian hall, and we sent them an NCP car park. <laughs> well, but of course, that's why I felt so drawn to this place. It's a brick-for-brick -brick replica of the hall in which I filmed my great unfinished opus, The Lizard of Oslo. In fact, my word, we've got almost everything I need to film the final scene. Really? Why, yes, we've got a stage. My new influx of class members can play a group of townspeople. We've already got a battalion of fearsome soldiers. Reenactors at your service. There's a camera. Ivan Gonzalez here, self taping for the role of Annie. <laughs> and an epic soundtrack courtesy of our magnificent bell ringers. <laughs> yes, in fact, all we'd need to film the scene is a giant lizard. Uh, <laughs> and so Waffles enjoys his film debut. Lavinia enjoys a relaunched career, and Jerry enjoys a family-sized bag of kettle chips. The most luxurious pillow he's ever experienced. <laughs> but questions remain. Why did Max take on the most dangerous case of his life? She made me an offer I couldn't refuse. A small amount of money. <laughs> and how will Ivan cope in a high-pressure situation? This town ain't big enough for the both of us. 
And by town, I mean toilet cubicle. And I apologise for joining you. <laughs> Find out all this and more as we continue The Casebook of Max and Ivan! <laughs> you have been listening to The Casebook of Max and Ivan. Written and performed by Max Oleska and Ivan Gonzalez. With Joanna Lumley as Lavinia Moncrief. David Reed as Jerry, Lewis McLeod as Malcolm, and Lolly Adafope as Janet. It is produced by Ben Walker for Retort for BBC Radio 4. Oh, sorry, sorry. Wasn't that great? You know, I was thinking detectives always have a weird quirk or catchphrase, you know, the really famous ones, like Columbo with... And one more thing. And what's his name, that guy? You know, the one with the elementary, my dear Watson. I forget his name. That guy. You know, if I was a detective, my quirk would be always eating the orange sweets. That's right. My assistant would pick out the orange sweets, put them in a special bag for me, you know, the Ziploc kind. I would carry them around, and I would pop one in my mouth as I contemplated who had done the bad things. And then... When I had solved the crime, I would fling the bag always against a wall, and they would know, ah, she solved the crime. Oh, and the other thing about this, didn't you love it, was Joanna Lumley's voice. Oh, my God. I mean, she gives such good voice. Anyway, folks, that is it from me for this week. But you can find more episodes of The Casebook of Max and Ivan through BBC iPlayer radio app. Use the hashtag Comedy of the Week to let us know what you thought and spread the word. And, you know, subscribe, review, the usual. I'm Sindhu V, and I will be back with more juicy ha-has next time. Bye. <laughs>